Welcome to the Inside Source, the podcast that is everything sports marketing. From agents and athletes to large and small brands, we are your number one source for inspiration on how to work with athletes. We got Mason Plumley here from the Denver Nuggets. Um, yeah, we're coming to us live from Disney World in the bubble. Um, apologize for any internet connection issues. It sounds like they got a lot of people playing video games down there. <laughs> How's it going, Mason? It's good. Um, you know, it's it's not as bad as been reported and some of the stuff people are seeing on social media, but but you're right. There's been a, a strong gaming effort by the NBA players and the Wi-Fi, the bandwidth is is hard to come by. So we'll we'll pull off this podcast though. I'm not worried. Hopefully some teams went to practice. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, before we get too much into the to the aspects of living in the bubble, which is just such a funny concept to me, um, I just I give a little background. So, I personally met Mason back in probably 2012 or 13 in Chicago. Um, I was working with Red Bull based in Chicago, and your agent was kind of having like a rookie show off day. I feel like and had a bunch of you guys in their office to meet some other people from brands and I remember there's myself and some other brands that were local to the area. Um, and yeah, and just fortunately stayed in touch. And then, um, when we launched, when I launched icon source, we connected being in Denver and, uh, and so, yeah, it's been great to, um, kind of be back in touch and, and working together a little bit. So. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad we reconnected. And, um, I know I shared this with you when we, when we reconnected in Denver, but icon source was, was something that I, you know, me and some friends had, had the idea of back in the day, but obviously execution is, is everything. So uh, <laughs> yeah. it's nice to see somebody do it, do it the right way. And, um, you know, we didn't even consider like, you know, plug and play contracts and some of the uh, things that, that facilitate these deals easier. So I, I think it's awesome what you're doing. I know the athlete side is, is very happy with it. And, um, you know, it's just, it's a, a welcomed tool. Awesome. Well, good. Thanks for the kind words. Um, so, so to start us off, I like to kind of like set the tone of why do you believe brands working with athletes is a good investment? Like that overall concept, um, what kind of doors does it open? Why do you, where do you think the real value is with that? Yeah, I think, you know, a athletes are, are unique in that there's, it, as far as the, the recognizable ones, there are only so many. Um, and you know, they're, they're just, they're, they're, um, they're good ambassadors because you, you see them, whether it's on TV, whether it's at an event, um, you know, and the, the engagement and the fan recognition and the excitement that people get uh, around these athletes is incredible. And, and there's such an interest that people not only want to know, you know, how did so-and-so play, but, but what were they wearing when they played or, you know, what kind of car does he drive to the arena? Or, I mean, it, it really is. And, and I appreciate that because as a kid, as a fan growing up, that, that was me. I, you know, yeah. you think, I thought Vince Carter was so good. I didn't want to just know, like, you know, what his workout was. Like, I wanted to know, you know, like, what books he reads. Or I wanted to know, like, what kind of car does he drive? And then, and then I think that's how, like, the next generation starts dreaming, right? Like, I'll never forget, I got the ESPN for kid or sports illustrated for kids. Yeah. And, and they're like, you know, Vince, what's your, what's your favorite um, possession or like what, what's one of your, the favorite purchases you've made. And it, it showed a Bentley. And I was like, well, I'm from Indiana. <laughs> I was like, what's a Bentley. I've never heard of this, <laughs> but um, you know, I think that the athletes are trendsetters. Um, you know, they are very recognizable and also, you know, depending on the sport, whether it be golf, or mountain biking or whatever the the equipment that they use it it's just validated on site so yeah with the exception of tiger and his clubs you know everybody <laughs> else you're like okay well if if McElroy is using this it has to be the best so um you know that that's my take on it yeah i think it it really provides brands with almost instant credibility in in yeah. those different um circles whether it's the kind of sport audience or even just like a community that may be around that sport so um it kind of lets a, a brand finally access those those consumers um 
without looking like they're faking it. I feel like I know when I look at um, like a brand that's maybe say is, is in like makes bikes, but they don't have any athletes that they work with. I'm like very hesitant to see like, you know, is this like something out of like a Walmart store or is this somebody that's actually progressing the sport? And that goes across all sports. Like, I don't know. I think I know there's been a couple of new basketball shoe companies that have come out and like their first move has always been to work with athletes. Cause they just know that's the only way to kind of get yeah, that I, trust. I mean, you said it in, in two words, which, which took me a lot longer to say, but it's, it's the instant credibility or the validation. And especially for, you know, the equipment, the, you know, the athleisure, whatever it is that guys use in games or in, in practice, like there's, there's no better. Um, to me, that's just a whole different, as, as, I'm, as you know, and the audience knows, that's a whole different category than like, you know, Beyonce doing the Pepsi halftime show. Right. Like, right. To me, that that's Pepsi trying to do something big and associate and have a huge event. But when you look at endorsement in terms of um, what's actually uh, used equipment or whatnot, like that's like you said, the credibility. Yeah. Um, so you've been in the NBA for what seven years? Or... Yep, seven. Yeah. So um, and have kind of been in multiple markets. Obviously, starting out in New York, which was pretty wild experience. What are some of the good examples that you've been a part of? Maybe from like, I don't know, more traditional endorsement deals to even like appearance, like some value that you feel like you've brought to a brand that's worked out well. And you think kind of you or both parties are pretty happy with just to give uh, some new brands that could be listening some ideas on, on how to work with, with someone. To me, I, I would say the best ones are, for, first of all, you have to know the athlete you're working with. You know, I have to, I, every team I've been on, I have not been the best player. I've not been the star in the city, but you know, the, the team association and, and we develop our own brands within a city in a way, you know, they'll be like, Oh, there's, you know, Mason and Denver, he comes off the bench, he plays hard, whatever. Um, but to me, like for my role in understanding where I am um, in, in the perception of the city, like some of the best engagement engagements I've had is like a, a tutoring company, uh, endorsing me to go out and do a community event where I, you know, I go to a, an after school program. Like to me, that's, that's something yeah. where y you likely won't get Darren Williams, even though Darren's a great guy, he would do it. It's just, you know, you, you could have any, any Brooklyn net go, you know? Right, so right. Um, to me, like the community engagement stuff where it's, yeah, you, you're paying the player, but uh, it's a give back effort in a way. Um, I, I think those are really cool. And you bring tremendous value to that situation or that, that moment, you know, that's going to really be a transformative um, time for, for the people involved. And I think that's, what's important for different companies to think about, you know, to really get creative on who they target and, and how big of an impact, uh, you know, bringing somebody in like that can do for, you know, dollar amounts that sometimes you know, are more obtainable than, than brands think, you know, I think a lot of times when they think of working with athletes, they're like, Oh, look, bringing in LeBron James is going to cost, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. And it's like to open your minds to think there's a lot of athletes that can bring significant value into different communities. So, yeah. And, and some of the, like, like I do a lot of visits to schools, like sometimes if the kids are in, you know, first, second grade, they, they don't care who, who you are, or what you play. They're just like, Oh, that, that guy's really tall. This is amazing. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? It, it sounds silly, but like, yeah, it's so we true. Have, we have a player that's seven, three, like you could take him to any kid event and they're going to go, they're going to go bonkers. You that's know? So true. <laughs> um, that's, that's a great point. I mean, I think you guys have that advantage in basketball is that you guys are kind of like a sight to see in real life up close. You know, everyone watches you guys yeah. on TV and you just don't realize the, how massive everybody is yeah i know I, I know you're laughing at it's goofy but it's, it's true like i mean you just i don't know the, the kids they're just oh my gosh there's someone taller than my dad are you kidding me <laughs> you know like those are the comments you get that's true um so thinking a little broader what are some good examples that you feel like you've seen brands do with athletes um mm -hmm. like kind of like beyond your personal scope that you've been like wow that's that's a creative that's a creative way of doing things you know, I think, I think anytime a brand engages with the athlete in a way that, that allows them to reflect their, 
their creativity, um, what what's true to them. Like when I look what Nike did with with Kyrie and his sneaker line, like Kyrie is intimately involved in the in the the design and the creativity, the messaging, the the wording on his sneakers. Um, I think that stuff really goes goes a long way because you know everybody knows Nike wants to sell you a shoe, but um, when you buy his shoe and you look at it in detail, like you know that Kyrie wants to share his message, right? Yeah. So like one of the, he's always had like his tagline has been like hungry and humble. You'll find that on all of his shoes. Um, you know, I, I think that's really cool. And then also I think when when brands then allow, you know, it, the NBA is the the sneaker brands are the biggest endorsers for us. So I always tend to right to, yeah to pull on those experiences. But um, you know, anytime. I see brands uh, allow the athletes to get out and give back in their community, um, whether it is with with product or whether it's sponsoring like a camp that they do, or you know I think athletes are are doing stuff in their hometowns even more now around you know social reform um, with a lot of the stuff going on in the country like just just even sponsoring what they're doing or saying hey like we're gonna send you know. Gatorade or body armor or whatever because because we want you know we want at your your city block party people to be hydrated and and you shouldn't have to pay for that like those are the things I think where it it goes goes a ways yeah it's just brands kind of meeting the athlete halfway you know and saying hey you know we want to ride on your credibility but we also want to do it in your voice and not just kind of like throwing a sticker on them or putting them in a commercial it's like really being true to to what their voice is yeah and and to me like what's cool about what you created is um like you say meet them halfway it's like you know what are you already doing as an athlete you know typically like when i even the the transition for me as i came into the league you know you'd have brands reach out and they say okay this is what we're looking for this is what we want and this is what we'll give you you know a, a platform where brands can sit back and say you know what like who's in you know, who's done an Ironman before or, yeah. you know, who's, who's into education reform or, um, cause like the way, like when I came into the league and, and this still happens, but they, they call and they, you know, they'd be like, Oh, like, do you have, do you have sports asthma? No. Okay, cool. Then they call the next player. <laughs> do you have sports asthma? Do you like, we have, we have an albuterol endorsement. Like I, th- those are the, <laughs> You know, so so just allowing them to kind mm-hmm. of see where athletes are at, what they're doing, and you know, you find out that that's where the best one. You know, you talk about some of the best engagements. Like, I'm not a big hunter fisher, but I've been uh, surprised to learn how many of these guys, Jared Jeffries, Brad Miller, um, have had like fishing shows yeah, or, or totally. hunting shows. Like to me, you know, how how would you even know that unless I don't know, you had like a profile on the player. Yeah. That's, that's one of the exciting parts on icon source is like you can search athletes that are into cooking and you can find professional surfers, baseball players, football players that you would never know. So, you know, that's been like a really cool functionality of our search tool to aggregate athletes from so many different sports backgrounds, but then identify them with specifics that are attached to that brand's kind of DNA, which are cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so what are some things that you would say brands should stay away from? I don't know. Obviously you're a nice, easygoing guy, but, uh, there's, there's certain moments that brands really kind of like stub their toe with working with athletes. And I don't know if you have any yeah. funny stories or, or kind of some advice to give. Ooh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would make, I would just make sure that you have, you have a, a written contractual agreement. Um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've been in rooms where it's like, I think it was Steiner sports, right. From New York. Um, they, it, matter of fact, this was with me and, and I'll, I'll never forget. Cause it was before practice. They're like, Hey, you know what? We'll, we'll pay you to sign a hundred basketballs. Okay, cool. No problem. Why well, get in the room? And like, you know, you walk into a room, you, you don't know how many basketballs there are, but there are a lot of basketballs and yeah. You know, I, I start, I do the, the row by, by column multiplication there. And I'm like, wow, they have about 170 basketballs here. 
So I got to a hundred and I was like, Oh, that's it. I'm done. And the, the people were like, well, you know, would you mind that? I'm like, no, I was like, you, you paid me for a hundred. I was like, now I'm going to go practice. Like, <laughs> so, so to me, just presenting what you want up front and being clear about it. And the autograph game is tricky because they always, you know, each one's another couple dollars or whatever. So, so they're always trying to get more in on you. But, you know, I've seen guys literally, walk out like to me if I'm paid for my time I'm always happy to go over time or whatever but I've seen guys be like okay you paid you paid me to show up and play beer pong for a half hour you know it doesn't matter where they're at in the game when a half hour hits they bounce yeah so and you got um, to you got to protect I mean you guys work really hard your practice hours are the reasons that you have the value you do so it's like yeah selling yourself short over and over kind of adds up on your career yeah. And, and I'm of the mind, like, look, if people are paying me to show up, like, uh, I'm not, I'm not minute tracking, um, like a masseuse, yeah. but <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. uh, it, it is, you know, athletes are a different breed and, and you have to be conscious of that. Yeah. I think especially if the contract process becomes fairly nickel and diming, then you're kind of going to get that out of the athlete in return. I think it just sets the tone. Yeah. So, um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the current environment, um, but on the lighter side of things. Maybe give us a, a sh kind of an inside look on what life is like with some of the most high-profile individuals in America all locked in Disney yeah. World right now. Yeah, the funniest, I mean, to me, the funniest thing is I, I bumped into uh, Andre Iguodala last night, and we have, everybody, ha you have to have a mask on when you leave your room. So if you don't, there's an anonymous tip line and they let you know somebody reported you, <laughs> whatever, whatever. But like, it's funny. And I know other people experience this too, is you don't know who you're talking to, which sounds crazy by just covering up this much of the face. But I'm yeah. like, I was like, Andre, is that you? And also <laughs> I forgot, you know, he had just signed with the heat and he had some heat gear on and he's like, yeah, yeah, it's me. But it's like, I don't know. It's like playing like peekaboo with someone. Um, that is so funny. Just like, and I, I, I mean, to me, I just think it's so funny. All the guys there, no children, you know, it's not like they're bringing their families, probably like a ton of people's private jets parked nearby, but you guys are like, kind of like in house arrest a little bit. It's just yeah. the idea of it is just so funny in my mind. I didn't know if there, somebody was going to be doing like a hard knocks TV show on just, looking at people trying to eat lunch at like a cafeteria every day. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. I'll tell you the other funny thing is like the NBA has gone <laughs> so out of its way to make it like accommodating and nice. And so we had this, I, I know it's been reported, but we had this pool party where they flew in a couple of DJs. Um, it was supposed to be awesome. And so like, I'm walking over to the pool and just that more out of curiosity. Cause I'm like, wait, all right. So there no, nobody's allowed in the bubble. So, you think that a bunch of NBA players are just going to be partying with each other and there are going to be no girls. Like what, <laughs> what, what like I, I was just curious. So I was like, I'm going to go drop by and see what it looks like. So I'm walking over there and Donovan Mitchell's like, don't go bro. He's like, it's only one person there. And so I was like, okay, I assume that I didn't think they would get any turnout, but I was like, I guess they got one person. And then the next day it shows Dwight Howard was basically videoing himself at the party all to himself, no. which is hilarious. But I, mean, it, I know the NBA is like, Oh yeah, we'll get, you know, we'll, we'll do music and whatever. And like there was that, that party had no chance. That is so funny. It's, it's great that they're trying it, but I just, <clears throat> it's gotta be tough. I mean, everybody's competitors. It can only be, you know, it's such a small area. It can only be so much fun, I guess, brought into that. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> well, cool, man. Uh, well, Mason, I appreciate you joining. Any final remarks or anything you, um, you want to leave in? Yeah, tune in. I mean, we're going through all this all this BS down here in Orlando. Games start the 30th, the 1st. Um, so <laughs> hopefully you guys tune in because we're going through it for you down here so so you can have some – some competition to entertain you, but um, it'll be good when games get going and, and we're glad that the NBA is back and uh, you know, we, we appreciate the support. And also I just want to say thanks for you to, for uh, bringing me into icon source. Um, like I said, it's, it's a, it's a welcomed um, solution. So, so thanks as always. And uh, thanks for having me on the podcast. Awesome. Thanks brother. Talk soon. 
Thanks for listening to The Inside Source. Every week, hear what brands, agents, and athletes have to say about sports marketing. If you would like to reach me directly, you can email me, chase at iconsource.com. Have a great day.